Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com. On Roku, we're in the sports section. Look us up, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. NFL Futures to win the Super Bowl. Let's say you're a sophisticated gambler. You understand that you're looking for bets where you're going to get leverage taking good teams. Right? What kind of leverage am I talking about? I'm talking about leverage of better than 5 to 1. Right? We're talking about leverage of, you know, typically six to one and better on elite teams. You understand that in betting futures, the strategy isn't to make a winning bet. Rather, the strategy is to make money. You want to play this like chess. You want to have more than one team. Right? You want to have it set up so when a game takes place, right, you have both teams in the conference final and you can sit back. And if one team wins, you win, let's say, 20 units of whatever you bet. If the other team wins, you more than double your money. Right? That's how you want to set it up. You're looking for win wins. You want a basket of teams so that when you get to the playoffs these teams are still active and you're getting leverage you don't lose if a team you have at seven to one plays a team that you have at eight to one with the winner of course going to the conference final giving you an opportunity to further hedge the play to make money when the whole thing is decided. Right? So with that in mind, let's think about the three best plays on NFL futures to win the Super Bowl. Right? First, let's look out for the potholes. The biggest pothole, the biggest mistake that I think gamblers make is to pick the strongest team in the league without paying any attention to their competition especially the competition in the division now an argument can be made and I'm in Northern California and you can imagine the sentiment here this team has made two consecutive NFC championship games they played in the Super Bowl last year an argument can be made that the San Francisco 49ers might be talent-wise the best team in the National Football League. Right? Colin Kaepernick, forget his legs. According to one set of statistics, he's one of the most accurate passers in the NFL. Right? An argument can also be made that the biggest competition the Niners might face could come from the Seattle Seahawks right the Seahawks have one of the sports best home field advantages right I understand people want to talk about replacement refs and stuff like that just understand the Seahawks last year at home beat a lot of great teams including the Green Bay Packers right the odds makers are all over these two teams San Francisco is seven to one to win the Super Bowl. Seattle is 8 to 1 to win the Super Bowl. I don't believe either of these teams are one of the three best bets you can make on teams to win the Super Bowl. Why? Because these teams are going to have to wrestle with each other as well as the Rams. Look at their record from last year, 7-8-1, and one, right, to win the NFC West. And, of course, if you look around the NFC, you're going to see some experienced teams who have been successful in the past 
who look like they're going to mount serious challenges to the throne in the conference this year. Wise guys in Las Vegas love the return of Sean Payton and his team, the New Orleans Saints. Right, Drew Brees has had multiple years of more than 5,000 passing yards. Jimmy Graham is still there. Marquise Colston is still there, right? That offense is still loaded. Darren Sproles remains one of the best pass-catching running backs in the league, right? Drew Brees plays indoors. He's going to have eight games of pristine passing conditions at home. Then, of course, he has a ninth game on the road indoors against the Atlanta Falcons, right? The Saints are dangerous. The Atlanta Falcons were the team that played the San Francisco 49ers in last year's NFC Championship game. All they have done is add Steven Jackson to a team that still has Julio Jones, Roddy White, and Tony Gonzalez, not to mention trigger man Matt Ryan. Of course, if we're talking about trigger men, an argument can be made that the best quarterback in this league is a Green Bay Packer, right? And of course, the Pack, quite frankly, remain one of the league's elite and dangerous teams. But understand, Aaron Rodgers has only won one Super Bowl. In New York, they'll tell you that Eli Manning has won two, and the Giants seem to be the NFC's version of the Pittsburgh Steelers, right? They'll miss the playoffs one year, then suddenly come back and win a Super Bowl, right? They're always dangerous. And, of course, some key players are back, right? Hakeem Nix is back from injury. Victor Cruz is back, right? Combine that with Eli, who threw for almost 4,000 yards last year and who has topped 4,800 passing yards in a season. Combine that with one of the league's best offensive coordinators, Kevin McBride. Think about the coaching continuity with Tom Coughlin. And of course, the Giants are one of those teams that could rise up and could win the NFC. In my opinion, the NFC is simply too dangerous. I don't think you can assume that any team in the NFC has a cakewalk to the first or second seed in the playoffs. As good as the Niners are and as good as the Seahawks are, I can't even tell you who's going to win that division. So I don't believe any of these NFC teams belong in the top three picks to win the Super Bowl in betting futures. Let's talk about the teams that do belong. We're looking for teams that have the jump on their division, who look like, quite frankly, a hurricane or something's going to have to hit to stop them from dominating their division. Right? We're trying to key on teams where we're getting reasonable odds. And the team looks like they have an excellent shot at the first or second seed in the conference. Because understand, if you have a team at 7 or 8 to 1 odds, and they actually are one of the top two seeds in the conference, then they're already in the second round of the playoffs. Right? All they have to do is win two games and they're in the Super Bowl. Right? Not only that, Keep in mind, if you're a hedge better, if you have a team who's one of the top two seeds in the um, conference, and you're trying to hedge by picking their opponent just to make sure you're on both sides of the play, you're going to get that opponent who will be on the road at huge odds. 3-1 to one to win the game. 4-1 to one to win the game. Making the hedge affordable. So let's talk about the three best plays in NFL futures. They're all AFC teams. They all have the jump on their division. 
The first, of course, is the team that hosted last year's AFC Championship game. You might know this team. They've been to five Super Bowls. And I'm talking about Bill Belichick, Tom Brady, and the New England Patriots. I know at first glance, it looks like the Patriots have had a lot of turnover. Right? Wes Walker, he's gone. Aaron Hernandez, he's arrested and in custody. Rob Gronkowski, he's injured. That's all true. But you need to realize that Gronkowski and Hernandez missed time last year. You need to further realize that Julian Edelman was an excellent replacement for Wes Walker years ago. They also have picked up Danny Amendola. You also need to realize that Tom Brady's favorite receiver, as he likes to say, is the open receiver. Right? Tom Brady is a guy who reads defenses with the best of them. Right? New England also has a great rushing attack. Stephen Ridley rushed for over 1,200 yards last year. He's not the only one back there. You got Brandon Bolden back there. You got Shane Vereen back there. Shane Vereen knows how to catch passes out of the backfield. He's a name you need to remember. Right? You have other superstars on this team. Vince Wilfork, for example. Talib. Now, when I look at the Patriots, understand I'm looking at a team where I'm actually getting better odds on as a gambler. At plus 850, 8.5 to 1. Then I'm getting on San Francisco at 7 to 1 or Seattle at 8 to 1. And, of course, there's no San Francisco or Seattle as an opponent for the Patriots in the AFC East. You have the New York Jets. Rex Ryan's job, quite frankly, is in jeopardy. The Jets are undermanned at skill positions. Right? They're actually expecting to get production from San Antonio Holmes at wide receiver this year. Right? Who really is the Jet running back? You tell me. Right? It's certainly not Freeman McNeil or someone like, like that. Right? This Jet team, quite frankly, is undermanned. Right? The quarterback remains Mark Sanchez. The team picked Geno Smith in the second round. Teams don't do that unless they have doubts about their starter. Right? I think the Jets have problems. Let's look at the Buffalo Bills. Understand the Bills have a new head coach. New coaches, with all due respect to Jim Harbaugh a couple years back, but new head coaches typically don't rule the roost. Right? Compound that with the fact that the Bills picked a quarterback in the first round, and E.J. Manuel, a rookie, will probably be their starting quarterback by the end of the year. Right now, I believe they're making do with Kevin Culp. In my opinion, they're not a serious challenger to the New England Patriots in the division. Then, of course, you have the Miami Dolphins. Folks, Reggie Bush is gone. He's now a Detroit Lion, right? As much as I like Ryan Tannehill at the end of the day, He's a second-year player, right? I don't think Miami is ready at this point to compete with the New England Patriots, right? You're getting great odds on the Patriots, 8.5 to 1. The Patriots winning the division looks like a done deal to me. Keep in mind, they're going to play six games against the three teams I just mentioned. I think the Patriots are one of your three best plays on NFL Futures. Let's talk about the other two. Think about the Denver Broncos. Like the Patriots, they hosted a playoff game last year. They continue to have one of the best quarterbacks in the National Football League. But more importantly, don't they almost win the AFC West by default? Think about the other teams in the AFC West. Kansas City. New head coach. New quarterback. Good luck coming back from that. Right? Take a look at the Oakland Raiders. New quarterback. Right? A team that, quite frankly, wasn't that good last year. An injury-prone running back in Darren McFadden. I have my doubts. 
Also, look at the San Diego Chargers, a new head coach. Right? So you have either new head coaches or new quarterbacks for every team in that division other than the Denver Broncos. Now, the Broncos are favored to win the Super Bowl at 6.5 to 1, but understand, that's only a marginally worse bet than San Francisco at 7 to 1. And unlike San Francisco, the Broncos have a cakewalk through their division. Let's talk about the third best play on NFL futures to win the Super Bowl. Take a hard look at the Houston Texans. Don't they win their division by default? Let's get real, folks. Indianapolis did it last year with smoke and mirrors. Statistically, they weren't that good. Right? Their defense was, in two words, below average. Right? They don't have the personnel that the Houston Texans have. You know, I love Andrew Luck. He and I went to the same school. I root for Andrew Luck. There's only so much a dominant quarterback can do when he doesn't have a great defense and a great team. Right? I think the Indianapolis Colts are overrated. I don't believe they pose a serious challenge to the Houston Texans. Let's talk about the other two teams in the division. If you look at points given up, did you know that the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Tennessee Titans had two of the worst defenses in the entire league last year? Think about it. Jacksonville gave up on average 27.8 points a game. And of course Tennessee somehow found a way to top them giving up over 29 points a game. Right? Defenses don't come together in one year. Jacksonville and Tennessee simply don't have the defense to compete with the Houston Texans. Right? New England, Denver, and Houston face far easier roads to the playoffs than do any team in the NFC. I think those three teams are your best bets for futures props on winning the Super Bowl. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com and on Roku in the sports section at Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Understand, to win the Super Bowl, you first have to make it to the playoffs, right? You first have to dominate your division. You want to get great seeding in the playoffs. In my opinion, the NFC is going to be the wild, wild west. A lot of good teams with a lot of talent shooting at each other. In the AFC, it's a little bit more cut and dry. New England, Denver, Houston. Those are your three best plays for NFL futures. Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.